Hello and welcome back. Today we've got another March Malternative and it's a Dorley's. So Dorley's Rum. Love that box. <laughs> a little bit dated perhaps, but I love it. I love the design. I love the colour schemes. I love that it's got a bloody parrot on the box. Wonderful. A little bit similar perhaps to a Scotch whisky having a Highland Piper in, in Tartan and a Scotty Dog in Mountains and a stag with massive antlers on the box. Perhaps, perhaps, a little bit cliche, but I love it, so I don't care. Dolly's rum is made in Barbados and it's made at Foursquare. So Dolly's is made by, by Foursquare at the same place as they make Seals rum and obviously the legendary and very hard to find Foursquare rums themselves. EXO on the label of this one suggests that the same as Cognac, that this is going to be at least six years old. We're also told that this is finished in Oloroso sherry casks. Like all rums from Barbados, this is unsweetened because of a lot of rums that are made in other countries around the world, because rum laws are very lax in a lot of countries. A lot of other countries will produce things that they label and market as rum, but they can be very, very heavily sweetened with sugar and syrup and flavourings and colourings, but not this one. It's completely unsweetened. It's bottled at 43% and each bottle contains the juices of one whole freshly squeezed parrot. You might also notice that I haven't got much of this left and there's a good reason for that because this stuff is very very easy drinking and I have found myself repeatedly going back to this bottle for a quick casual dram over all of my other open bottles so let's get some in the glass also point out that like the other three rums that I'm going to review in this series so next week's review and the one after uh, the the Ray and Nephew doesn't because it's a its own thing so that bizarre plastic screw top with a dribbler. But this rum and the two next ones have actually a plastic cork. So it's like a, a soft rubbery kind of elastomer seal. It looks a little bit like silicon. I'm not sure if it actually is. It's quite hard actually. But beautiful design actually. Because we know that you've got a smooth cylinder of polished glass. Well not polished but smooth good surface finished glass in there. So all you need is a reliable and compliant material to push in there and something that I quite like if you look closely at the cork on this and a lot of other rums they have a little scallop notched out of the cork so it actually makes it easier to push in so you're not generating any pressure until you get down to there and it's only those last five or six millimeters where you're actually compressing and it's just guiding in until there and it presses in and then you've got your little five six mil of seal unlike the vast majority of scotch whiskey there's been some proper thought and work and design and engineering gone into the closure of this bottle and that goes for the other rums from jamaica and barbados and across the rum making world they're putting more effort into making a reliable closure for their rums than all of scotland does how stable long term is this going to be because plastics like cork to be fair plastics all decompose on a very long scale a lot of them how long is that going to be stable for i don't know but as with all spirits i would say people obviously enjoy collecting spirits and putting it on a shelf and looking at it and polishing it but to me whiskey and rum and tequila and mezcal and all of those things i buy them to drink them if i store anything long term it's just because i haven't got around to drinking it yet but yeah if you're storing them long term i can't say how stable this is going to be but i'd say if you're storing things like this long term what are you up to let's get some in the glass no more distractions Arden American glass today Everyone loves Arden American, don't they?
25 mil of pure parrot juice. <laughs> Where can I put that? Where you can see it. I'll show you the, the front and back labels. You can hit pause on that and have a look if you want to. Right, Dawley's XO Rum, product of Barbados, 43% on the nose. Immediately quite different to the Ray and Nephew Jamaican White Overproof. And you can immediately tell that this has had some significant barrel aging. There's the obvious effect of some wood on there, although not too much. I think you can also immediately tell the, there's the influence of those Oloroso sherry casks. I think it's also immediately obvious that this being a aged rum from Barbados, it's that bit more gentle and more straightforward, less funky and more easy drinking than the Jamaican rums, which tend to have a little bit more character. They're a bit more fierce and a bit more funky. The nose of this one, I'm going to say sweet and light, more refined sugar, which is a characteristic that I'm finding common across a lot of rums. I know of hot chocolate, like hot chocolate with orange oil in it. Milk chocolate. It's a sweet, peachy no note to the nose of this. Vanilla, but not the kind of sort of vanilla flavouring that you get in a lot of stuff these days. It's more like actual vanilla pods. I'm actually home brewing a batch of stout that's got coffee and vanilla in it, and I used actual vanilla pods in primary fermentation to make that and the vanilla note on this it really reminds me of that musty genuine vanilla pod note rather than vanilla flavoring also some toffee on the nose of this one dark chocolate and a little bit of a note of dandelion and burdock so kind of like a root beer note for you americans out there let's see how it tastes Fairly clear, but not too clear. If this has been filtered, I'd probably say reasonably lightly. On the palette, more of that vanilla, and again, actual musty vanilla pods rather than a vanilla, sweet vanilla flavouring. Strong note on the palette of chocolate caramels. Kind of a little bit of a Mars bar note. Some more oranginess, and it's a musty oranginess, so kind of like an orange pith note. A nice rounded sweet honeyed note as well as a really nice sweet oakiness i think that the the oloroso sherry note that you get on this one it's an interesting and very pleasant mix of like a sweet and a dry sherry it's not your super dry like fino sherry it's not a dry spicy sherry that you get like an edradao caledonia but it's also not an overly sweet PX sherry or the kind of like flavor dipped sherry that you get on a lot of modern sherry finished whiskies. Now this is an Oloroso sherry finish matured in American oak casks and then finished in the Oloroso but it really doesn't come across as a finish in any negative way. But the degree of sweetness that I'm getting on the palate of this one and the sweetness of the sherry characteristic makes me think that this probably is sherry seasoned American oak casks definitely doesn't have the kind of spiciness that you would get or that I would associate with European oak. As for the finish on this one, I think probably largely down to that 43% ABV. Slightly thin on the finish and could be longer, but really excellent flavours. Sweet orangey sherry and chocolate. It's a fantastic rum. So what's the verdict? I think... If you're a scotch drinker who's never really had a good premium rum, this is a really, really good one to start off with. It's got defined sherry notes that will be very familiar to scotch drinkers, but with plenty of presence from the base spirit and the actual rum itself. I think that it's very, very easy drinking, and it's going to be very familiar and non-challenging to the majority of scotch drinkers, but also very, very good. 
And on the other hand, if you do like rum, if you're a bit of a, a seasoned rum aficionado, then I still think that it's absolutely great value. There's a casual rum dram at £35, that's what I paid for this one. Although, honestly, that 43% ABV does leave me wanting a little bit more. And it's really not that this is underpowered in any way. I think that it's just that that 43%, it's enough to show you the flavours that it's got, but I really just want more of them. On the subject of intensity, though, I have found it interesting trying this series of rums that I've been dedicating my time to recently. I think rum being distilled molasses or cane juices, it does give a very different profile to a distilled barley spirit. I think there's no two ways about it, and neither one is better than the other. But me, myself, as a, a seasoned Scotch aficionado, a, a whiskey, Scotch whiskey enthusiast, I do sometimes find some rums, their flavour profile, and I don't want to say this, but a little bit thin. But I think that's really a little bit unfair. I think that it's just the differences of the flavour profile of your average rum compared to a scotch. It just has a different feel about it. I think that with rum, it's quite often all about those fruity top notes rather than sort of base flavours. And this is very hard to describe, but maybe some of you might know what I'm talking about with rum. It can be kind of like a vertical arrangement of flavours and layers, whereas scotch tends to be more of a broad experience. It's very hard to explain, but I think the takeaway is really that if you are a scotch drinker and you're just getting into rum, don't write things off that seem a little bit on the, the thin or focused or delicate side. It really just requires a little bit of a recalibration in the way that you taste things. It's just different. But anyway, going back to this Dawley's XO, this, we're assuming, six-year-old rum from Barbados, I think that at the price it sells for, it's an absolute bargain. It has some really excellent flavours, and I think that in its favour, it is more of a stereotypical, straightforward rum. It's got none of, or very little funk. It's got no scary surprises, but it's also a big step up from many of the standard kind of bog standard rum offerings that a lot of us are going to be more familiar with. And also, I do think that you can tell that this is probably older than the majority of standard offerings in the rum world. So yeah, I think that this Dawley's XO Parrot Juice is a great rum for all occasions. I think that it's got enough complexity to dive into if you want to, but it's also a really easy going enough and cheap enough dram that you can really enjoy it at face value without thinking too much about it. I think that this stuff is a great introduction into rum, great introduction to Barbados, and a great introduction to the Dawleys range. And if I'm honest, I'm really relieved that I've done this review now, because I can stop worrying about finishing this bottle. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think about rum, and rum from Barbados, and Dawleys, and Foursquare. Thanks for watching, and cheers.